of the Bitcoin meetup, which happens in which happened last night. Some of you may have been there. Uh, we have asked one of the top blockchain developers of the world to come to Athens in April. Come and help us learn more about uh, blockchain development. Uh, his name is Jimmy Song. And you can read more about that seminar at the website programmingblockchain.com. Uh, if you need any more questions on that, ask me or Maria. Let's welcome Eric. Uh, this will also be live streamed and also available on the internet later on. Uh, Eric, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, I'm here to present a bit today. Um, so, some of you may have heard of it, some not. So, I will do it like a general quick introduction at the beginning, but the main focus of this meetup will be on discussions because I'm sure all of you have questions and doubts. So, um, I will just run through this. Ah, we don't have the, the audio. Well, just uh, uh, let's just skip the video. So, one of the reasons why I joined WitNation and why I think that this is something that can actually make a change in, in let's say, the, the world that we live in today is because um, I come from uh, like anarchist background and I thought of uh, changing things and of like implementing ideas in the real world, but I always um, found out that in the existing political system it's very difficult or almost impossible to make changes. So, as uh, Cody Wilson said here, um, basically, you, you could try all your life to change things from within the political system by becoming a member of it and trying to get more popularity and to um, become, you know, some member of the, of the government. But eventually, um, you, you just waste a lot of time and eventually become compromised by the system itself. So, instead of doing so, you could write code that actually already creates the, the, the new paradigm that you're looking for. So instead of trying to, to change the existing system and fight the existing system, you could just build a new one that makes the old one obsolete. So uh, essentially the question with BitNation is, um, would you like to choose your governance services just the same way that you choose your uh, phone provider, for example? So um, as you might know, like, when you're born in one place, you cannot choose if you want to be part of that governance system or not. You're just born there, you have to have the citizenship, and uh, if you want to leave it behind and to opt into a different governance system, it's very difficult. Like, uh, you have to go through a big bureaucratic process, you have to uh, leave behind your family, your culture, your language, your everything, just to choose a different service provider. So, the, the idea of BitNation is really to offer people to opt into new governance services non-geographically, without having to move from one country to another. So one of our ambassadors, Tetsuishi, said, um, the blockchain is not just for money, it's there for brand new governance structures, replacing the nation-state concept of the Napoleon era. Digital nomads like me know that national borders are imaginary. Our activities are global, but most governance systems are still for locals only. The government marriage system is one of the most obsolete systems today. Marriage is a very personal matter, but it's being enforced by governments and the laws are so different in each country. So he himself is a digital nomad and he, he left Japan, is now traveling in Southeast Asia. But uh, for, for example, digital nomads know very well that um, people can live independently from the place where they happen to be born. And uh, especially for people who live this kind of international lifestyle, they would need a different kind of uh, service provider for all of this. Um, and probably you heard about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and all of this, but uh, BitNation is much more about applications. It's more about uh, something that you, that you can reach through it and that you can change in the existing system, um, and not just about the, the currency. So this is about uh, a layer on top of it about building applications on blockchains. So, uh, what we have today in the world is basically um, global geographical governance oligopoly, which are known as the nation states, because in whichever territory you happen to go into, you have a local monopoly of governance. So, this creates war, injustice, corruption, and taxes, 
because yeah, you you happen to be uh, born there, and you have to participate in this. And you have no other choice than uh, to live under the system that is forced upon you. So the current governance providers don't need to compete in their territory because they're monopolies. And as you might know from economics, when you have a monopoly, uh, they don't have an incentive to improve their services or to give you a good offer. They, they just happen to be the ones who, um, who can, let's say, extort you. And uh, as they have no competition, they have no incentive for offering better services to their citizens. So another one of our ambassadors, Pedro Rivera from Colombia, said, uh, I want to create tools that people can use to manage themselves as a society. Conventional law-based system is very weak for the society we live in nowadays. People with enough money or intelligence can manipulate and use it against society, as we have seen many times. So especially in Colombia, um, they, they, they already know that po politics is more like a popularity contest and it's not about uh, ideas or actual programs anymore. And um, they know that, um, that all of this uh, governance um, machine, let's say, it's, it's more or less just changing the faces every four years, but the, the service itself is not changing. It's, it's the same. Um, it's the same machinery, just with a different phase every four years. And um, if you actually want to, to change how the government operates, you need a complete uh, change like of the system. So what we with BitNation provide is we are building an app called Pangea, like the supercontinent Pangea. And uh, what we first of all want to provide is the very infrastructure of what a government is. It's about uh, ID, identification, uh, it's about uh, making agreements and uh, legal services. So basically giving you a, a secure and legal backbone for other things that you do in your daily life. So um, we offer you to create binding peer-to-peer -peer smart contracts and we do this through a, a mobile chat interface because we know that most in the, most of the third world countries and frontier markets uh, deals are being done through chats anyways, through WeChat, WhatsApp, and so on. So you don't want to have to go through a different platform and to have like a big onboarding process. Ideally, you can do this already through chats with the chatbot or something like this. And you can already start um, a contract template through a normal chat. So in most of the, um, let's say, black markets and gray markets in, in developing countries, people are doing handshakes anyways. They, they don't do formal contracts and they, they have no legal security for this kind of informal agreements. So what they could do through Pangea is to uh, secure their agreements through the, the blockchain. So they could, uh, instead of having to just rely on trust and to, uh, to have confidence in this person who you're uh, doing your business with, they could have the smart contract on the blockchain. Um, furthermore, whenever uh, an agreement is set up, um, the, the two parties also choose one arbitrator who is responsible for the conflicts that come from this contract. So already before there's um, a market for arbitrators to compete for reputation for clients, which is very different from the existing court system today where judges are going to have their job anyways to the rest of their lives because uh, they are a member of the government. And here arbitrators would have to compete and would have to, have, uh, to offer good services in order to, yeah, to make a living. So, yeah, we offer a P2P market for arbitration, which is completely independent from uh, local jurisdictions and from the local law systems. So uh, people can choose their agreements to use, um, to use a code of law that is completely different from the existing um, law system where they live. So uh, as of now, here in Athens, in Greece, uh, you could use, for example, a uh, smart contract with uh, common law or with civil law or even with Sharia. Like you could imagine any kind of uh, code of law and people could just make peer-to-peer -peer agreements that are just binding between the two of them, no one else. And uh, these voluntary agreements would be bound by, by this smart contract. And furthermore, for Pangea, you can also create and join virtual nations. So what does virtual nation mean in this context? It's not like the uh, big of packages of the government that you have today. Uh, we do not offer defense services or, I don't know, schools or like these things. 
So of course, we're just starting step by step with the services that are uh, can be possibly provided uh, digitally. So um, as you can see here, we start with uh, law, we start with arbitration, we start with things that can be done remotely. Um, but we will see um, in the future many more D apps might be um, programmed, and we, we will get we will get there later on. But this is the very foundation, let's say, what we are providing now with Pangea. So, uh, just to make the case, um, we have um, yeah the, the mobile usage in the world is even uh, mostly already um, it has the biggest density in third world countries. So you would think that in Africa or Southeast Asia and other places, uh, people wouldn't have the access to the service because it requires uh, people to have internet and a smartphone. But uh, actually, 60% of uh, uh, smartphones are already in developing countries. And even though they have a bad internet coverage, they do already have smartphones. So uh, I will get there later on. But uh, we also uh, plan to create an app in a way that can be used offline, even when you have no internet. Um, so yeah, we, we do already have a society that is mainly driven through uh, chat applications. We use WeChat, Facebook Messenger, uh, WhatsApp, and so on every day. And the global legal services market is uh, $600 billion per year. So that's actually quite a big uh, market that uh, will be approached through this app. So we identified, like I said before, that um, people are doing uh, businesses through chats. So that's why we're designing Pangea and uh, chat interface. And furthermore, um, Pantalasa is the mesh network that is uh, basically the very essential part of, of this app that we're creating because um, we want people to be able to communicate uh, without um, having their conversations being public on the blockchain. This is a very big threat because governments could use this against Indonesian citizens to, uh, for retaliation. And um, basically Pantalasa works in a way that um, people can communicate from uh, from between nodes, just between each other, and there's no central server that is storing the data, just like in, in uh, WhatsApp and Facebook and so on. So here, um, you would not only have uh, this this kind of conversation, uh, but you also have the possibility to use speaker nets. So what does this mean? It means that uh, you can have conversations through cable, through Bluetooth, through other um, relay systems. So you could, for example, install a relay in um, Ghana, for example, and have a 20-kilometer radius where everyone within this reach could, with their smartphones that they have already, um, make contracts and communications on Pangea. Um, so this is one very important factor, let's say, to, to be able to implement uh, Pangea and this kind of smart contracts in the places where it's needed the most, in third world countries. Um, and uh, another important aspect of Pantalasa is that it's delay tolerant. So uh, you can have agreements in this offline zone and later on when someone from this area comes back to the internet, it will be automatically synchronized and it can keep running nevertheless. So uh, the, the part that is online and the offline part, they can uh, run simultaneously. So. Uh, another very important aspect of all of this is that um, we have two billion unbanked adults in the world uh, that do not have access to financial markets because uh, they just don't happen to have um, bank accounts and they may, may lack identification to be able to uh, set up bank accounts or to uh, use um, their assets in some sort of way. You could imagine, for example, uh, farmers in Ghana who don't have uh, land deeds to be able to um, monetize their, their lands or to be able to uh, have a contract when someone builds a building on their land or when they have a dispute with another farmer, uh, they would not have any sort of legal security for um, basically what, who owns which land. So you can imagine um, that there's like a huge part of the world, as you can see here, it's a uh, $10 trillion uh, economy that does not have any access to the systems that we have here in Europe nowadays. Furthermore, we have bad passports uh, that make it very hard for people all over the world to travel or to uh, live and work abroad. And um, basically, 
um, the, the whole uh, visa system is, is like a huge barrier and we we want to offer people um, a bit nation citizenship, a world citizenship basically and we will um, negotiate with nation states that they will accept our citizens travel rights so people can actually start to live in a more borderless way without uh, having to go through through this uh, obstacles that are imposed upon us. So another one of our ambassadors, Christoph Feuermann, who's a digital nomad himself, said passports are by no means necessary. Unfortunately, the global apartheid condemns millions of people to stay in their impoverished home countries. My hopes rest in the Bit Nation platform, which possibly provides everyone in the world with a unique ID on the blockchain, which could be recognized as official travel documents by governments. So of course, there's a long way to go until we can reach that phase, but ideally we can create uh, blockchain IDs that can be used instead of uh, passports that are universally recognized. So you wouldn't have uh, this kind of problems anymore with recognition or which standard is the one that is recognized. You would create a new standard on blockchains, not only for IDs, but also for all types of certificates. It could be for marriage, it could be for um, for birth certificates, could be driver licenses, like any type of certificate that you can imagine, um, it could become part of a new blockchain standard. So one example of what this kind of um, ID, blockchain ID looks like, would look like this year, it was um, 2014. So you would also have an expiry date, you would have a QR code to check basically the hash where this ID was timestamped. So timestamping means that some um, data or some information is basically put on the block of a blockchain where it cannot be um, manipulated anymore. I don't know if, if you heard about blockchain before, um, but in general, this ledger, and if you would want to change or fake anything within this uh, public ledger, uh, you would have to have more than 50% of the whole computing power of the whole network, which the case of Bitcoin or Ethereum and other uh, blockchain networks would be almost impossible to do, like even with governments. So, um, yeah, th that's also the whole promise of blockchain, that you can uh, secure um, data and information in a way uh, that it cannot be faked or corrupted through uh, government bureaucracies, for example. Um, and also this kind of blockchain notarization is also uh, really um, good for, for land titles, like I said before, birth certificates, childcare contracts, business deals, so like any, any type of agreement where you would need the uh, government permission to do it, you could instead do it through a, a peer to peer network and have a sort of consensus of a network of people from all over the world uh, consenting to this, which would give you much uh, even bigger legitimization than if you would do it through a national government. So these uh, documents are uh, always accessible because they're on the blockchain. They're not dependent on any single server. They have no single point of failure because they're being used in many uh, computers, let's say, at the same time. And uh, you can also prove your ownership of these uh, titles because um, in this document you created the hash and if you would repeat the same process and you change, for example, the name of the owner of the document, it would not give you the same hash again, it would create a different hash. So there, there's like some uh, mechanisms to, to prove uh, when you're the owner of something on the blockchain. Um, another one of our ambassadors from Ghana, uh, African Sofia Kosa, said, um, most of the properties in my country have no titles because of cumbersome process and corruption. Decentralized land administration accessible to everyone is what is needed, and the blockchain offers that very cheap. Sooner than later, the state is going to become obsolete. So, also another aspect is that because you don't have the whole, um, you know, government bureaucracy behind the administration, you can basically automate the whole administration of certificates. You can <coughs> save a lot of resources, which can be used for more efficient things than, than to just having to um, send humans to make a stamp on a piece of paper. So. Within BitNation, we have already more than 10,000 uh, citizens um, that signed up on the website, but all of this is going to be moved to the actual app as soon as it's finished. Um, we have more than 2,000 open source contributors. Uh, within the last three and a half years, we gathered more than 100,000 lines of code that go on to our product development. 
and uh, more than 200 embassies and consulates. So what what is what are Bitnation embassies? So Bitnation citizens just um, choose to offer their uh, personal space or co-working space as a place where other Bitnation citizens can work or even live. So depending on their terms and conditions, people can not only use these virtual services, but to also offer a physical component to all of this. Um, people can travel and uh, live with other Bitnation citizens as, as, they, as they wish, basically. So this is also another interesting aspect, and embassies may want to evolve into some sort of uh, nation, because basically anything could be a nation, even the space could be a nation. Because the very definition of a nation is actually um, not as what we know today, but it's the representation of a group of people that share a common language, a common culture, and a common set of interests. So it doesn't have to be like in the, in the way that we know what a nation is today. It's going to actually be a completely different uh, perspective. And um, we, we had a cooperation with um, Estonia for the um, notarization. So we had a public notary where people could notarize uh, contracts, agreements, certificates. And more than 5,000 times uh, this was used on our websites. Uh, but all of this is also going to be uh, further developed. So you, you can also not only have the, the hash to prove the ownership, but also to verify if uh, something is legal. So uh, as of now, we're using the Ethereum blockchain for the timestamping part, but Pangea itself is working uh, independently from the blockchain. So you could um, move all of this mesh network that we're building and put it on a different block that Ethereum also moves. That in the future, maybe there will be something more efficient, faster, or better. So we built the, the, the whole design of Pangea as a way that it should be blockchain agnostic. So we're also using um, IPFS, which you might have heard of before, as a way of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, data storage, which goes uh, much further than what you know from BitTorrent, for example. Um, and yeah, you, you might have heard of the other ones, but I will not go too much into the technical details. <coughs> so BitNation Pangea is a decentralized, encrypted, open source, dispute resolution chat mesh network. So that's like a lot of words. Um, but basically the idea is that anyone can create their own nation where people can participate and live under a certain code of law. And um, they, they can establish uh, their, their own way of, of having agreements, of interacting or um, building new things that weren't even there before. Like, we encourage everyone to build to build new applications on top of this. So, um, if, if essentially, uh, BitNation will be as a form of platform, let's say, where uh, more and more governance services could be provided in the form of uh, apps, basically that you could download just on your smartphone. Uh, so you could, instead of having to go through all the uh, government bureaucracies, you could uh, just within a matter of uh, minutes. Do, do all the same uh, legal process just from your smartphone. So just to give you an overview of the things that could be built uh, on top of all of this. Um, so we have, for example, marriage, smart love. We could have business cooperation that instead of incorporating your business in, uh, in a nation state jurisdiction, you could incorporate your company on the blockchain, which could give you many more opportunities and um, I know there's always the, the big question of taxes and all of this, but we imagine that um, nations could, for example, also create their own token. Like we uh, enable all nations to create their own ERC20 token. And within this token, they could, for example, have um, sort of uh, flat tax so that within every transaction, you also could have some sort of tax that goes to the respective uh, nation. Um, yeah, you, you could have a basic income uh, protocol where people contribute to um, a pool, let's say, of, of dividends that uh, people can use to have uh, like basic security in their life for, for basic income and um, to, to give people the possibility to think about all of these things because uh, we know that people have, um, they, they have to run after money basically every day and they live in their private bubble and they're not able to think about uh, problems like in, in systemic in a systemic way um, but if you would have a sort of basic income 
you would have more time and freedom to actually devote time to, to, this, to these things. Um, yeah, you could have um, Will's P2P security. There is one app or the app that is uh, being uh, developed right now that is called Be Umbrella, uh, who actually want to offer a market for P2P security. So it could be uh, ex-military veterans, it could be uh, white hat hackers. So any kind of security service can be provided on this app. Um, and it's, it's an uh, optional service, and any of these services are optional. Also, no one has to be part of a nation, a bit nation or a Nigeria. Um, you can also make trade agreements just by being a citizen without any of the other things. Um, and yeah, you could also imagine things like healthcare, unemployment insurance, and all of these things being developed uh, on top of Pangea um, because it would be in a, in a borderless and global way where people all over the world can contribute and that transcends the whole uh, like ge geographic dependency. You know? <laughs> that you no longer have to depend on whether you were born in Europe or in Bangladesh or anywhere else. So you could actually give people all over the world the access to the same high quality governance services. So this is just to give you um, some sort of uh, overview of uh, what's happened uh, from, from the past until now. So BitNation was founded in July 2014, so we do already have uh, history, we didn't come out of nowhere. Um, we already had our first iteration with the uh, Horizon chain in 2015, but we figured out that it would be too slow, too costly, and it's the problem of having uh, everything transparently in public on the blockchain is a huge uh, security uh, like threat because um, it would be bad for, for the citizens and the governments would know about their, their conversation. Um, in 2015, we also had the refugee emergency response where we basically created blockchain IDs for stateless refugees who had no documents. And um, they could use these kind of IDs um, specifically when they tried to register somewhere. Or um, Apart from that, we also offered Bitcoin debit cards so they could actually um, pay for, for goods or the things they need for food. Um, because many of them wouldn't even be able to get a credit card or anything like that. So they they couldn't even um, yeah, have a bank account or anything. Um, in 2015, we also had the cooperation with Estonia's e residency program. And um, they also uh, further developed their program. So maybe you've heard of uh, Estonia before. Um, the, the idea of Estonia is that um, the businesses outside of Estonia can use the Estonian jurisdiction to incorporate their companies. And they would pay. Uh, taxes to, to Estonia, not to where they just happened to be born. And they, Estonia was the first country to uh, make this kind of digital transformation to realize that their uh, government services should not be geographically anymore, but they can be worldwide. And um, essentially, I think with BitNation, we could also offer um, existing nation states um, that they join our platform, they offer some of their government services in a borderless way, and so in this way we could also have a win-win situation. So instead of having to force people to either be with us or with the existing nation states, uh, nation states could just join BitNation, they, we could have a collaboration where um, they can also have a bigger, let's say, customer base when they offer their services worldwide. Um, yeah, in uh, 2016, uh, we tried to uh, build Pinji also with Secure Scalabot, but we realized that this was not the optimal solution for the chat interface. So eventually, with IPFS, um, we started to um, use this code and to build our own mesh network, which is independent from existing providers. And yeah, now, like the end of 2017, now in 2018, uh, we're building our own chatbot, uh, not the chatbot, the uh, bots for reputation. So um, this is another very important aspect for deals or agreements on Pangea, um, that the reputation is not done through humans, but it's actually done through uh, AI. Because um, maybe you've seen one episode of Black Mirror where it ended up in this kind of uh, reputation slavery. So when you have uh, human reputation, um, you can very easily fake your reputation or you can have like people of higher reputation dictating others who have less reputation. So we want uh, to uh, free people from this kind of reputation slavery. And that. But I, we, I will go more into that in the discussion probably. Um, 
uh, Amin Rafi said, um, my aim to, is to help spread the overall peer-to-peer -peer movement and its reflection for Bitcoin and similar technologies. BitNation represents the very idea in a diverse and versatile manner that not only empowers individuals, but also entire nations who have been left without a voice. So here you can imagine not only individuals uh, opting out, but even entire nations that feel that they have been neglected by the existing um, jurisdiction or the existing nation state they live in. Uh, for example, in Catalonia, um, I, I'm seeing that actually myself because I live there now, um, their, their sovereignty movements completely ignored by the Spanish government, or th there's many more like um, movements of um, not recognized nations or even tribes, for example, in the Amazonian uh, rainforest, who uh, have been exploited and uh, ex expropriated basically by governments, they could use um, blockchain to, to basically reclaim their sovereignty and to have some sort of uh, legal backbone in their, in their movements. Because with this, you actually have, um, let's say, all the consensus of the, of the people who, who are in this network. So, um, yeah, j instead of just doing um, these local movements, you could try to bring them all together in a sort of way in BitNation. And in the future, we also imagine to have some sort of funds for local governments projects where people can post their uh, ideas for local governance. Uh, maybe they identify local uh, problems and um, there, there would be people voting on uh, what they think is worth supporting, could be automatically uh, distributed, uh, Ether or another uh, token, to um, yeah, give people the, the possibility to start by starting, to uh, start up their, their project or their idea and to not have to like do a crowdfunding campaign or anything like this, they could just directly go to BitNation and um, have a access to a sort of uh, governance fund. Um, yeah, so this is what this could look like, but uh, it's, it's done with considerate and it's of course not as, as it will be in the future. But just to get an idea that um, it should be accessible for everyone. Um, and yeah, finally, this is our founder, Suzanne Tarkovsky Tempelhoff, and she said, uh, what we are doing is making nation-state governments entirely irrelevant. No government, whether democratic or autocratic, can survive without the consent of the subjects. The same way Bitcoin has transformed the financial systems, BitNation will irreversibly change the political system and the course of history. <coughs> so yeah, we, we have been covered by several uh, media outlets and um, like over the past three years, we have built uh, quite a presence and community. This is just to, to mention a few, like on the BBC, Forbes, Vice, uh, TEDx, um, Wired, so that you can have uh, an image. And yeah, that's it. This. And then I was in the, in the fire party, and also in the Greek fire party, and I kind of focused a lot on the issues that arise with people debating, uh, writing proposals, and people discussing that sort of thing. So I worked on a conceptual project, essentially using some of the, the text that you came across. Mm. Uh, the idea of this, I didn't know what you call it. A bit, bit more based kind of paper trade where you can't just jump that. But the biggest challenge for this kind of system to work properly is user differentiation. How do you deal with IDs of one account for one real person and then dealing with people that don't use the system for intention? How do you deal with uh, that way that you're trying to gain the system? And the second thing is one. Excuse me, the second well, question. Improving. So, making sure that the equipment is up to the challenges. Or, um, if you're, you're saying that you're blockchain agnostic, mm. so I guess you're in your design prepared to move to new Yeah, so actually, this Pantala Mesh network is built in a way that is uh, resistant to hacks from quantum computers. I'm working on a proposal like from Pelsi for the free power, so I'd like mm. to talk to you about that. So that's the really end of thinking. 
Are you still like a similar system that you can buy any method? It's, you know, in war, you may not, you may not have the usual channels available. No internet, no nothing. You may yeah. just have like a radio signal and you can need to like put something at home. Mm. And then kind of updates, status, or whatever. So, yeah. Stuff. I'll help you out. But yeah, I want, I want an answer for the idea. So that's yeah. something that I haven't been able to solve without a multimodal authentication system that would be fine, but uh, it doesn't agree with the belief that biometric would be stored in blockchain. Mm. Even if you can convince them that, hey, it's going to be secure, it's still like, no, even like also our founder says, uh, if you put biometrics on the blockchain, it will lead to the next genocide. So uh, no, we yeah. will not do that. So how, <laughs> how do you do that? So um, basically, we also encourage everyone, first of all, to use uh, Pinji in a pseudonymous way. You will just have the wallet where you can use a uh, public address and can do your uh, transactions and deals in a pseudonymous way. But for the um, IDs, yes, I know that uh, you need to have a proof of uh, individuality and that you're yourself. Um, so, yeah, we, we're um, working on that as of now. Like, we're uh, creating a sort of laissez passer passport, uh, like uh, stateless people can uh, use already today. Um, so, you would need to find some things that you can prove or that you, that you show, like, to. to um, to show that you're yourself, but without giving away, uh, let's say, your fingerprint or your eye scan or whatever, you know. Um, so, I don't know, there, there would be prof probably uh, different things coming up. Like, um, I know in the very first uh, stage we used witnesses. I know that this is extremely corruptible. Um, I, I thought about this. Mm. But the thing is, you need to instantiate some users that are good in the system, that are good the patient. And actually, pause the system, and then they can, by extension, add more people, or they can add as agents for people. This is something that we also talk about. So, what do you do with people that are not, you know, using some sort of a technical box that they write the system? Then you have some sort of an agent system where you trust at least two of them are creators, and they go out to people's houses mm -hmm. and provide a service to have their wills kind of put onto the system and have multiple people verify the digital. Just, you know, hmm. we have people that are able to pull people around. Yeah. Um, yeah. A very quick question. Is there an nice talking about whether something dates or not? Um, I, I came late, so I didn't hear much. Yeah. Um, no, now, now we postponed it. Like, first it was uh, thought to be in the, in the end of February, but now it's postponed to the end of March because um, we want to have like a really secure and audited code so that there's no uh, security holes like in other ICOs where they just want to make quick money. We want to offer a proper uh, app actually before the start of the public sale. There is an ICO, and the other thing is, um, have you raised any funds? Yeah, uh, we, we had the pre sale and we raised 3 million. You, you asked if we raised any funds. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, we raised three million in the pre sale. Okay. So basically, you don't really have an answer for the ID problems. Mm. Um, well, like, I think uh, as of now, we're also trying to go on with the witness idea. Um, but. Yeah, I will, I will also get more in touch about that because I know it's really difficult to have on the one side uh, have this pseudonymous element to, um, you know, give people some sort of security that when they use this app that they will not be have to fear that the government's going to knock on their door the next day. Uh, but on the other side, you need to have a proper verification in order to be able to travel and so to have this kind of uh, passport, for example. So it's, it's like a trade-off. Like, uh, it used to be only like you could have either pseudonymity or uh, the, the ID. Uh, and, but first of all, like, uh, to, to have a functioning market and reputation and so on, we, we designed in a way that it can also work for pseudonymous accounts. Um, but yeah, we, we are also looking for a way to, to um, prove your individuality. I know that um, one of. 
Mm. Yeah, but um, I, I mentioned before uh, the Lucy bot that is actually going to detect when you're uh, creating fake IDs or cr uh, fake accounts to, to push your reputation. Um, and it's going to like detect this kind of civil attacks. Not necessarily push your reputation. That's really, you know, two bad things with one account, burn that account, mm. create another account. It doesn't really stop that. It doesn't stop sort of crime. Well, um, first of all, we, we are not offering support for criminal laws or not. It's more like uh, contract law, you know. So um, you cannot, for example, save someone from I don't know when he's uh, when he's being uh, attacked or I don't know. Like you, you could think of this uh, physical defense and so on that I mentioned would be umbrella. Uh, but as of now, we can only secure you or help you with uh, things that come from the contracts that you uh, set up on Pangea. And it can only be between people who are uh, between individuals who are already registered as citizens on, on Pangea. So, um, no, I mean, uh, maybe that will be developed in the future, but uh, as of now, we, we cannot, for example, offer this kind of uh, criminal law um, uh, things. I mean, that, that could be established within the individual nations that are built on top of this. Maybe uh, they will have a sort of uh, constitution. Of course, every nation will have a constitution and sort of uh, way to resolve uh, these, these things when it happens between citizens. But uh, it's difficult, of course, because uh, the, most of them will be pseudonymous and you will not be able to, for example, find them physically. You, you have only their uh, wallets. You, you only have their, their public address. How do you enforce contracts without resulting violence? Yeah. Um, so basically, the idea is to have a different uh, motivation. Instead of being uh, in fear of being put in jail or in, in a cage, let's say, um, you will have a positive incentive by um, having your um, basically your money locked in a smart contract. So uh, you have multi-sig wallets, which means that. Uh, whenever you set up a deal or an agreement, um, you lock, let's say, the, the money that you, um, that's, uh, you're being paid with is locked in this kind of uh, multi-sig wallet. And in order to access it, you need two out of three keys. And um, you cannot just run away with the money. So you need to come to an agreement with the other person. Or if you don't come to an agreement, you will have the arbitrator who will choose what happens to the money and can be either sent back or... Uh, if the agreement was right, then the person will get the money. So you, you have, let's say, a sort of financial incentive, and you also have the reputational incentive that uh, if you behave bad, um, you will just not get the reputation. Um, in our case, you, you have three types of reputation. You have, first of all, a reputation as you, as a citizen. Whenever you successfully complete a contract, you will get... Um, positive reputation, you cannot get negative reputation through this AI bot. Uh, and then you also have reputation for nations. People can, but that's uh, done through humans. They can rate, let's say, nations if they are uh, good or bad or if they feel like they properly represent uh, their interests. And you have reputation for uh, laws. So uh, people develop laws or smart contracts which represent the laws. And others are going to start using these smart contracts. And it's also sort of market because you can also get a revenue from people who use your laws. And you can also rate these laws. And um, if you do bad things or if you design it in a malicious way, then you, you will get a bad reputation and uh, people will no longer want to work with you. So it's, it's based on a on, um, positive incentive scheme then on... Um, you know, threatening people with police. So, yeah. But this multi sig method assumes that you have to lock up a lot of capital. Since you are paying in advance, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine you are paying <coughs> So, you would have to pay rent in advance in the smart contract or in a multi sig wallet. Yeah. Uh, so, this means that when you participate in contracts like that, you lock up a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. But it depends. It depends on the kind of 
uh, contract that you agree with, there would be several multi-sig wallets for different things, or uh, it could be done uh, also in, in other ways. But I'm just saying, um, in general, we allow people to um, to create, let's say, new new ways of um, doing their their deals or agreements um, without having to resort to violence. So, so that's the very idea to to um, create a new paradigm where you use positive incentives instead of uh, this kind of deterrence. So changing from um, a system of deterrence to a system of uh, incentivization. So, um, the membership inside of one of these nations, yeah. is it signify an agreement to accept certain smart contracts, accept certain businesses, things like that? What is it exactly? So, um, basically, when, I mean, just by joining Pangea itself, you do not have any other obligations or nothing. You can also just be a citizen without being part of any nation. You can also uh, just create a um, contract with someone else, just peer-to-peer, -peer, without uh, being obliged to, to anyone or nothing. Um, but I can imagine that the nations that are being built, uh, they might have some constitutions and some things, so like, let's say, terms and conditions, that you should uh, read through before joining them. Um, but of course, the most important aspect of all of this, uh, membership or citizenship essentially, is always voluntary. So like from all of, we, we do not dictate anything. Like we do not dictate any sort of economic system. Like you can experiment with different economic systems or uh, ideological systems. Um, but we do, the only thing that we require is that the citizenship is always voluntary. So that at any time you can opt in and opt out. So if you don't like it anymore, you can also leave. Right, that's why I'm curious about why you would opt in. Like, it seems like you can just participate as an individual. Yeah. So I'm curious about what unique experience you have as a member of the um, Experience? What would it afford you? Um, I mean, they uh, they will probably uh, represent a uh, bulk of people who have, uh, like, I don't know, it could be, uh, for example, a refugee nation. It could be um, a nation representing all the refugees in the world that are um, that are having problems right now because of several crises. And they could offer uh, some sort of shelter, they could offer some sort of peer-to-peer uh, -peer services, like uh, anything that, that you could um, come up with that they might need their current situation, um, but uh, essentially it's, it's really the, the idea is that you have freedom, that you have, um, that, that there's like no, no limit apart from, from the code, let's say, but um, that for now um, we just give you the tools to experiment with, with different uh, things that people would, would want to use. So uh, you as a, if you create a nation, you would also try to build it in a way that people would want to use it, right? It's, it's basically like an um, insurance or something like this. You also need to design it in a way that uh, people want to use it and uh, that you properly, um, you know, that you offer services that uh, represent what people pay. Uh, so there, there would probably also be some contributions or subscription or anything. But, um, we will see. Let's say you, you cannot uh, forecast what, what freedom will, will bring upon us. Uh, there will be all kinds of nations probably. We, we already have, for example, uh, in Venezuela, we have someone working on um, offering an alternative to the Venezuelan uh, government because uh, they do have a big problem with their economy and uh, you could already cr could create a sort of, um, you know, like this way to, to let people make uh, deals and business without having the Venezuelan government interfere. It would already happen a lot. Um, or we already have people who want to create sort of Catalonia 2.0, um, which would be like a virtual representation of the aspirations of Catalonia to become like an independent nation. Instead of having to uh, actually uh, have the physical territory, they could rather um, do their things already uh, in the virtual realm without having to come to a physical confrontation with the Spanish government. Between the main differences between the nation and the other things like uh, um, Estonia in residency or Singapore, so in China. China? Okay. There's going to be this kind of attempts by nations. Uh, what do you think is going to be the main difference between uh, the nation and the military? Mm. 
So I think, um, first of all, with BitNation, uh, you have a new jurisdiction that is outside of these jurisdictions. So, um, or not just one, but you have a market of jurisdictions. And um, with, with uh, Estonia, Singapore, and so on, um, you can only do your, you can only use the existing laws that already exist. But with BitNation, you can create new laws that don't, don't even exist yet. Um, so you, you have much more customization, let's say, to, to what you really need. And you can use it in a way, yeah, that is non-geographic. But it will be interesting to see which nations make the step, like Estonia, to, um, to think outside of, of this uh, geographic territory. I guess the, I guess the, the, the representation system is while uh, Estonia is centralized, they are mm. right? So, as with Estonia, they only offer uh, incorporation, actually. So, they do not offer more services as of now, at least. So, like, um, yeah, basically, your, your business ID, uh, paying your taxes, and um, I don't know if they also cover health insurance for their employees. I have to check. But, um, yeah, apart from that, they do not offer many and many other things. But with uh, BitNation, you can create your own services. You can uh, come up with new concepts or new um, ways of solving problems that is not uh, attacked or not approached by by governments as well now. So um, there is um, this uh, Spanish uh, Yeah. Uh, I was kind of trying to relate uh, this project that I don't know that much with BitNation because I guess uh, BitNation is a, a bigger project since it will also be the, the, the business part. Pay employees directly with tokens. I guess that it's going to be some kind of class like in the hidden blockchain, but the uh, Mm -hmm. So, uh, what uh, are the ideas about businesses and uh, digital companies in this? Um, so, uh, we know about Aragon, and um, like, yeah, I think um, they, they are more focused on building DAOs, like um, creating businesses in a way that you do not need to have management for them anymore. You just write the uh, code and then from there on you can just focus on operations and all the accounting administration and so on it will be optimized through, through the code. Um, I think they're also still just starting but it's like also a very interesting project and uh, I think we could also have some sort of integration because you know all of these are open source projects and in, in all of the ecosystem we sort of you know uh, integrate one and another and um, it will be interesting to see what kind of developments they, they will also have. Um, but yeah, it's, it sounds like uh, something uh, worth thinking about for, for like integrating their functionalities for incorporation, business of incorporation. Have you thought about how you're going to deal with uh, nations, applications, how just that would not like? Yeah. Okay, so first of all about the nations. Um, so first, the, the very first thing is that we um, embrace this pseudonymity aspect, first of all because of this, to secure uh, our, our citizens' safety from their governments so they do not know where uh, BitNation citizens are lo located. Um, but also if they would find out, I mean, um, there are different aspects to how to develop this. So we uh, want to build a um, diplomatic ambassador network that uh, actually negotiates with nation states' representatives when, for example, BitNation citizens are in jail to get them out of jail. Or, um, for example, when there's like a building and they say they have a different law. Like they would just say we created our own law and the BitNation system. It's like, like you could imagine like an embassy because also in the existing world, 
uh, you have, uh, for example, here in Athens, you have different embassies from di different countries, and within the embassy, they do not have Greek law. They have their own law. So in the same way, uh, we could negotiate that um, nation states will actually recognize uh, this type of tasks, it's like temporary autonomous zones, um, and that they... Um, so one part of this would be this negotiations, the other part would be like to have actual um, business with nation states, so that by offering them our platform to offer their services to people worldwide, uh, they would at the same time also recognize um, the, our, our um, citizens and our uh, the laws that are being done through this. But I know that there's like a, a big potential conflict and um, we, we try to like not be too confrontative and let's see, let's see how it goes. And the second question, you said uh, how we can guarantee the development of the project. Hmm. Okay. Um, so first of all, the uh, funds are secured, and uh, I think it's done through Bitcoin Swiss here, right? um, so that we cannot, for example, just run away with the uh, funds from from the ICO. Um, and apart from that, um, yeah, we we have our roadmap. We have uh, like we have a big community of uh, contributors, and um, of course, right now it's still rather dependent on the core team, of course, but it's it's like that in every project, I think. Um, but we, we have like a very uh, strong vision and like a common culture, let's say, that makes us uh, stay together. So, for example, at the last meetup, someone was just offering one of our lead developers if he wouldn't want to uh, want to be hired by this other project, and it's like no, it's like we we have a very strong vision with this because we we believe in this. So uh, that's like let's say the thing I can tell about this. And apart from that, yeah. We're just uh, trying our best to keep up with the uh, with the roadmap. The level of competition is kind of so high that you know, to be frank, would you be tortured in order to save the dogs? At some point, you, you're competing with dogs, mm. right? And they will try everything and anything to win you. Do they see that you are a threat? Mm. Right now, it's still small and how you say it's okay and not in the money. But this yeah. is having a direct competition with us. Unless they realize that he's going to be as funny as far ahead into the future, I realize that everyone else has to Excuse me? So, I'm for a bit No, no, no. We, we <laughs> <laughs> like what we, what we would have is would be umbrella, this uh, like individual security, maybe, but uh, ne no, never an army. No. <laughs> Are you working? So I will meet uh, people in Estonia again in June and I will talk about this. Let's see if we can deepen our collaboration. Uh, as of now, let's say the certificates that are done through notary are, um, for example, when you make a marriage it's not specifically recognized as a marriage certificate, but it's a legal contract. So whenever you have dispute in the court, it can already be used as a proof. So um, this is already, by the way, something that not only in Estonia, but in many courts in the world is already being done, that when you have an expert who can testify uh, that you can already use blockchain certificates as a sort of proof in a case in the court. Um, but yeah, it's true, like we, we should uh, work or more on, on being recognized through nation states, yeah. Do you just use Ether to make So on uh, Pangea, we have our own token called PET, the Pangea arbitration token. Um, but yes, uh, because it's run on the Ethereum blockchain, you also need to have some Ether in your wallet to pay for the miners' fees. Um, I was thinking about a possible solution because someone was criticizing this, that if you have many um, interactions, that is going to be very costly because the miners' fees are going up and up and up, the higher the price of Ether. So we could have a sort of uh, rain network where, for example, a nation 
could be let's say the the host of a network between the participants and they um can establish sort of trust lines like you have trust lines between banks and they could make as many uh, transactions as they want between each other for free and maybe in the end of the month they would just say close this and pay uh pay as if it was only one transaction so with this you could uh, almost uh, go around this this problem of transaction fees in the Ethereum network, but we will see how all of this will uh, will gonna develop, and also with other blockchains, how it's gonna go out. Excuse me, I didn't understand. Healthcare. Healthcare. Yeah. I'm just talking my field, uh, like you said before, uh, you are not going to provide the uh, other services or healthcare or education services. So, like I showed in, in uh, what I showed here, basically, with yeah, what I showed here, uh, it's just potential applications. It's not what we're doing now. It's uh, we're just building the infrastructure for this. <laughs> I mean, governments are still very slow in adoption, um, but I believe that in the next years we will see something like this, um, and it would be interesting to see because uh, when you do something like that, it would not be national anymore. It would be international because you could say the, the access to just one geographic location doesn't make sense and also it would be much more efficient I think when you have a global pool of uh, sub uh, subscribers let's say um, and that you can have uh, let's say a bigger yeah global uh, field of, of uh, like where, where you can actually use the self-care not only in one place Yeah, so um, when you set up the smart contract, you uh, need to, to agree on some parameters that can be computed. So the um, AI can actually judge with these par uh, parameters if the contract was completed or not. Uh, of course, there are things that the AI is not going to be able to, to judge. Like, um, and then it's, it's going to be about the human arbitrator to actually solve these problems. So that's why we have the both elements. Um, when uh, there, there are things like, um, when, for example, you uh, have a product and it doesn't work or it's, it's like not the right color of a t-shirt or whatever, uh, the AI wouldn't be able to judge these things. But uh, the person who actually bought this will uh, then uh, be the one to say, okay, it's not right. And uh, I want an arbitrator to help me in this case. But for, um, for example, the AI is going to be useful for when you have fake accounts. When you create several fake accounts and you, um, or, or it's not fake accounts, actually also an idea is to have multiple accounts because maybe you want one official uh, account for your citizenship or your uh, travel documents, but you also want a pseudonymous account when you're a gay couple in Iran and you want to uh, save your your assets by marrying actually so um, you, you there are actually cases where it makes sense to have multiple um, identities um, But if you have like um, several let's say these fake accounts you just try to make interactions between yourself to push your reputation so the um, AI should be able to detect this to uh, filter this out because uh, We don't want people to let's say take advantage of this uh, fake reputation and the um, reputation is done through um, non-tradable reputation tokens. So um, it's, it's basically like an ERC-20 token, just uh, without the line that it's tradable. So you will have it on this public address, and it cannot be um, eliminated anymore. It's not like central, um, it's not done in a central database, it's also on the blockchain. Um, and you, you will have it on this public address and cannot be re removed anymore. Sorry, that part of your system then? 
Yes, yes, we're we're actually building this uh, AI bot called Lucy. Yes, yeah, so we we have let's say actually four tokens. Like one is the token that you can also use to pay services, the pet token uh, that can be bought now on the token sale. Um, but you also have three non-tradable ret reputation tokens. And first of all, we will focus on this one. Like I said, it's going to be governed through the AI box. There's the reputation of individual citizens. And the other two non-tradable reputation tokens are for nations and for laws. So you have sort of uh, competition between these three things. questions I can ask him afterwards, but um, I'm, I'm not the developer of the, of the mesh network. <laughs> What's your special thing here? What? What's your special thing? Um, basically, I'm the lead ambassador. So um, I try to be the bridge between uh, the technical part and the community. And um, also, I'm actually looking for new ambassadors to help us uh, to also organize these kind of events. And um, yeah, like uh, I have an overview of like all the things that are going on inside. Um, but I'm not a developer myself, no. Ah, uh, I joined in early 2015. So I was first for two and a half years a volunteer and um, was like organizing many things or like taking part in conferences or interviews. And since uh, last October, I'm now an um, employee actually employee. or not no um it's it's more like a consultant let's say it's more like that so but we're we're uh, registered in switzerland we have an incorporation uh, in switzerland for the ico um but the team is international it's all over the world so my question is did you use big nation for the funding contract or did you use the nation switch law yeah, it's in the Swiss law, actually. Because as of now, it's like still required. Um, but ideally, in the future, we could also move this as the uh, bit nation jurisdictions will be recognized by nation states. But I don't want to have problems, for example, in the place where I live, just for maybe when they say I wouldn't be paying taxes or something like that. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so uh, first of all, all these records on the blockchain, they're not done with your name, but with your uh, public address or with your public key. So you would have to know who is who by being able to say, okay, this is a bad person. But if you know the public address and then you can track, let's say, all these records, yeah, then it might be a problem. And I know in general, it's like this issue that we have today, like uh, this right to be forgotten, it doesn't exist anymore, also with the internet. It's like also in Google, uh, all the websites and so on that are deleted, you still have some sort of page and uh, you can always uh, find the things that have been deleted on the internet. So uh, you, you don't, yeah, in this sense, it's very bad, but we try the best for privacy, of course, by having... Um, what do you mean? So uh, you mean because of reputation? So Yeah, but um, you don't have negative reputation. You just have positive reputation. Yeah. So why not the negative reputation? I mean, it's David, for example, if someone yeah. goes and says something racist, he's downloaded, and he goes out of the platform. Mm. 
Um, so like I said before, there are multiple reputation tokens. And um, the one that is for citizens, it's the one that can be only positive, but the other ones can also be negative. So um, we think that for completing contracts, it should not be uh, relevant, let's say, the, these kind of things. You know, it's just about getting the job done. And uh, you, I mean, there, there's no reason, I mean, to give a bad reputation to someone when he successfully completes his, uh, his agreements. So it's a different thing, let's say. You, you shouldn't uh, judge people for, for their uh, background or for their opinions. I mean, uh, they would be on their own nation. That's something else. When you have, for example, a KKK nation, uh, they could have a negative reputation. Yeah, the, uh, the nation <coughs> itself, yes, but individuals, no. How, how do you mark someone who's his accountant? Well, he would have no reputation. He would just have zero reputation. I, hmm. um, I mean, maybe the AI bot would uh, be able to blacklist him somehow. We, we will see that. I'm also not uh, completely aware of uh, how's, how that's going to be in the end. But um, I believe just the way that uh, people who make these fake accounts to just push their reputation, that also uh, scammers will be somehow blacklisted or something like this. So that's sort of a negative situation. Well, yeah. Let's say it's, it's still in development, it's not so finalized. But yeah, it's an uh, important question because uh, on the one side we don't want to have this reputation slavery, on the on the other side uh, you shouldn't be able to get away with scams. So yeah. But on the on the other hand, the scams are no points because, like I said before, you have these uh, multi-sig wallets. So uh, either you completely fulfill uh, the job that you're being asked for. Uh, or the person who paid you will call the arbitrator and they will find out it was a scam. So, yeah. Um, so, like I said before, we first of all focus on the whole legal aspect, and um, when we have like um, let's say this infrastructure up and running, uh, and we have raised the, the funds from the public sale, we can support other developers. So that's also the idea to have like this kind of thriving governance ecosystem where uh, people can access this kind of funds and to uh, that we also help potential developers who build an application on top of Pangea. So, yeah. Um, I know there's many problems and there's things to be solved, but um, we are just outlining, let's say, a vision and uh, we're doing, we're starting step by step with individual things and uh, it's not possible to tell you from the beginning how all the problems are going to be solved. But um, we, we do have, um, let's say, a guideline, we do have um, the community was willing to, to help us with that and so uh, I think more and more people are going to join us as they see that this is uh, really something that can make a change in our daily lives. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Um, um, so specifically now on Pangea, you will have um, you will be able to sign up as a citizen um, to create a wallet, it's a specific Pangea wallet. Um, you can create uh, nations, you can join new nations. Um, 
if now in the very MVP, in the very first version, uh, you will, uh, of course, be able to chat. It's a uh, cryptographically encrypted chat, which is on the mesh network. Um, I think uh, that, that's about it for the, for the first iteration. Now that what we will release for the public sale. Uh, but then, of course, we will add uh, more things like creating um, the smart contract templates, like um, like the whole uh, ID thing, the the travel of and so on, um, and so uh, the the whole arbitration market, the the dispute resolution, and so on, to set up contracts itself. Like all of this will be added over time. And so now we already have. Uh, it's a very, very basic uh, version of the app already on Android, on the app on Google Play Store. Um, but this is still, let's say, not something where you should really do a lot yet. In um, three weeks, we will have an updated version, also the iOS version. And um, then, like every three weeks, we will add more functionalities and it will be like more and more. So, will we be able to use the platform? Um, so now in the public sale, um, you basically enter a smart contract where uh, you reserve the rights for these pet tokens. And at the end of the public sale, all the pet tokens will be distributed to all the addresses that uh, through these smart contracts. Um, no, we do have a business model basically in the um, Whenever you set up a contract, or when you create a new nation, or uh, when you offer a new uh, smart contract template, there is a fee involved. So you have a small uh, fee, but that is uh, to maintain the network. And so uh, I think when we scale this on the basically on the global scale, uh, there is also a huge return to this, which is also uh, why it would be good to have that because that's going to resemble the growth of uh, India. So, for, for Pajia, um, basically you have PAT, but you can also uh, use any other currency. So, um, you, you could just do, do things with Ether or with other cryptocurrencies, um, but maybe you could even think of um, hacked uh, coins, you know, like some sort of points that are uh, resembling the value of euros, so you could just, because people are sometimes afraid of the fluctuations in the cryptocurrency markets, so you could even think of a smart contract that offer you to pay with euro directly, um, or, um, yeah, but um, essentially, because all of this is voluntary, we also don't dictate people to use uh, this or the other currency, so uh, it's, it's up to everyone what currency they want to do their, um, their agreements. Mm. Um, so what you've seen in the uh, presentation was from Considerate. We used this uh, website, and so you would just get an idea. But this is something that will be far more involved in the uh, beta release. So now we're doing the the alpha version, and I think for the like what we're doing now is much more focused on early Bitcoin adopters and the um, you know the the crypto community. But um, when we target the, the uh, mass uh, adoption, I think then we will also like implement these kind of features because uh, that's something that really makes a difference when you offer people to, you know, just kickstart their their very own uh, local projects. So I think this was something interesting. In 2015, we um, used one of their. Side chains, I'm not sure it was called Next. No, it was Horizon actually. Yeah, Horizon. Um, and I think for some reason, we, I mean, it, it didn't work out. We, it, it was like too slow and like um, other things. And in general, it didn't uh, fit well for the idea of Pangea. I mean, now we've switched to a chat interface where you would have like your own mesh network and so on. Um, and I think with Horizon, it was uh, to. Like you, you would have also everything on the blockchain. That that's not very reasonable, let's say, because uh, then you have everything 
public and it's uh, slower and more transaction costs. You, you were what? Ah, yeah, Rootstock. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's more and more of this kind of inter-blockchain uh, implementations, which is very interesting to use uh, Ethereum smart contracts, but on other blockchains. So on the Bitcoin blockchain, for example. Yeah, um, we will see like which one is going to be the best in the future. Um, it's that's, it, that's one of the reasons why I get my project conceptual. I don't trust any current implementations really with things like creating proposals and voting. Yeah. So and my, my key issues are, again, user and system association and identity and identity management. This, this is not something that's simple. Mm. So identity is something that, that changes over time. But in the past, and this is also their approach to identity is kind of addressing the key issues. But I think as soon as identity is solved, and now all of a sudden it makes sense. And we um, yeah. just have like Estonia where we have I think, this issue by the government. Maybe you know about Uport. It's I think also yeah. new to this. I think that's uh, yeah. We we're also waiting for more developments in that field, so we can also uh, keep up with that. Excuse me? Do you have an estimation when the is going to be ready? Of the app. Um, so, of course, uh, the, like, the best version will be available, or not the best, but like a better version right before we start the public sale, because we aim to have like functioning, or at least uh, somewhat functioning app for the start of the public sale, so that will be around the end of March. But uh, in general, we, we keep updating the, the app more and more all the time. So, for example, in half a year, I think it will be already totally different. Do you have any more doubts or ideas or things you want to add? No, not yet, actually. Like, uh, I, I, w I was looking, but I didn't find it. <laughs> yeah, it would be cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, because right now what you have on the website is not being updated anymore. Now we're going to move everything to Pangea and everything is focused on Pangea. Um, so it's it's not like um, you know what you where you have citizen registry and so on. Um, it's uh, kind of out of date. Like it's it was just a way to see how it could look like and how many people are interested and to give people the chance to connect with each other. But uh, now it's like I think slowly being more and more outdated, and then everything should be moved to the PGA. You can talk to me. <laughs> I think now it's uh, actually twelve thousand or thirteen thousand. Um, they're from all over the world, but I think the biggest parts in Brazil. Um, I mean, and in general, in places where people are fed up with their governments, um, and um, but yeah, it's it's like really all over the world, like in, in Latin America, in, in uh, Europe, of course, in Southeast Asia, I think as well, um, Africa. But um, we are we are also trying to more and more reach out to the, like the the remote regions because now I feel like it's still more focused on in Europe, and uh, I also want to like travel to other regions find ambassadors to also do these kind of meetups uh, in the places where it's actually much more interesting, where they don't have all the government services, like I said, in Ghana or uh, maybe in Malaysia, like you could imagine many um, of these 
developing countries, um, mm -hmm. they, they don't have, uh, the, the governments don't even offer the same services, they don't even have everything. So you could uh, already step in there and uh, add, like, uh, use these things as an added service. I mean, it's. Um, I think governments there are still not so involved in that. And also, maybe they're uh, afraid because uh, many of these governments in Africa they're very corrupt, and so with this you would see exactly where the money ends up, and because like the complete transparency. Like um, this is not something that is part of BitNation, but you can imagine, for example, blockchain being used to track um, government funds because this is something public and everyone has the right to know what happens to their tax money. So um, then they, they wouldn't want to establish this because uh, they wouldn't have the, the same uh, luxury anymore like they have today. Also for donations, you know, like uh, foreign aid, uh, many of these monies are like just being drained in between the, the institutions there. And so with blockchain, you could actually track where the money is flowing. And um, yeah, I think they're very slow in adoption because of this. So if you have no more questions, I think. Uh, No, we just did this for the investors, but uh, what we do is we offer people to create uh, their own jurisdictions, which is something completely different. It's, it's not under any nation state law. I mean, um, nation states can also offer their own law as a voluntary service, but in general, uh, no one is forced to be under Swiss law or anything like this, no. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. How is who protected? The details of the people who participate. The data. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think first of all, the, it should be protected by uh, not having it on the blockchain because if it's on the blockchain, then uh, it would be like public and open for everyone. So uh, first of all, we don't require uh, you to put your personal information to create an account at Benjia, it's pseudonymous. But for the um, ID, for the uh, passport and citizenship and so on, um, I think that there could be systems of, for example, uh, proving that you're yourself without having to store the data somewhere. You know, that's, that's uh, the worst part when you... When you uh, hmm. um, I don't know, like, uh, there, there could be a way of maybe simultaneously verifying it and at the same time, uh, like, deleting the data, or I don't know. The only way, public service, for example, here, we have some public service that will offer cryptographic facts. But they want to give you a little bit there. So this is the so, 
Oh, but the government has all the data. I don't understand. So you uh, you can log in. Oh, I I don't understand. How do you this side is so uh, this is something that we're like at the same time still uh, checking like well, what's the best way to do it like one way like we said before would be through biometrics to have your fingerprint or your eye scan or these kind of things but we don't want this kind of stuff on the blockchain um, so another idea would be through witnesses to have like other people can testify that you are you and uh, they need to be also uh, in a way um, like validated, and so then you would have, let's say, a peer-to-peer -peer verification. Uh, but we, we will see how, how this evolves, because this is also a big... Uh, I mean, we're, we're still in the development of it all. We, we just start with pseudonymous IDs, and then and over time we also add this aspect of putting um, the citizenship and the, the blockchain ID and so on. But first of all, we just offer uh, people to make agreements pseudonymously and to create their own laws, um, but then uh, as we see how the how the whole ecosystem evolves, because the ID uh, problem is still not solved, let's say in the general in the mm -hmm. blockchain space. So the investors are also from all over the world, uh, but in general, I would say they're early Bitcoin uh, adopters. So people who, who already made money through through Bitcoin and Ether. Um, no, in general, it should be people who also believe in the vision. I mean that they're not speculating and just trying to sell it. No, I can't stop it, but I mean... Um, so first of all, I think big investors want to have, uh, let's say, front-loaded purchases. So they try to get some deals before the beginning of the public sale to get some discounts. And there we see who they are. So I think in general, this is also a way to uh, distinguish, you know, who is who and do we really want him, him or that. Um, but yeah, the actual public sale, uh, you cannot control it. Yeah, it's true. But uh, then they will not get the discounts. So, yeah. All right, so I think it's enough for today. Yes. <laughs>